from the CSI Today News Desk at the College of Staten Island. Welcome to the CSI Today Talks Podcast with your hosts, David Pizzuto and Terry Manns. The CSI Today Talks Podcast is your connection to the College of Staten Island with the newsmakers that make it happen. From world-renowned faculty and staff, dynamic students, and community leaders, stay connected to CSI with CSI Today Talks. And now, here is your host, David Pizzuto. Welcome, everybody, to CSI Today Talks, the official podcast of the College of Staten Island. I am your co-host, David Pizzuto, welcoming you to a new episode here. This is Season 1, Episode 3, as we premiere our show on Monday, February 14th of 2022. If you happen to be joining us on our premiere day, well, then happy Valentine's Day to you and yours. Uh, But whenever you're deciding to listen to us, whatever day of the week, whatever time of day, we're thankful that you're here catching up with the newsmakers that make the College of Staten Island the great institution that it is. Season one, episode three, we have a great guest lined up for you folks today. In just a few moments, I am going to be speaking with Dr. Wilma Jones at the College of Staten Island. Wilma, uh, professor and and reference uh, former chief librarian at the College of Staten Island. And uh, Wilma is also a anti-racism advocate and a tremendous one at that, has given the College of Staten Island tremendous resources for anti-racism. And that's going to be the crux of our conversation today. So excited to be speaking with uh, Dr. Wilma Jones, who will join me in just a few moments. Before we get to uh, Wilma, We do want to let you know some housekeeping uh, for the podcast. If you haven't already uh, hit the subscribe button, please do so no matter uh, where you are listening to us, whether it's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, Breaker, no matter where you're tuning in. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you do not miss uh, an episode. We thank you for listening to this point so far. And also, you could subscribe via our website at www.csitoday.com. There is a subscribe button for CSI Today. And every week, we bring you the top news headlines. And we also bring you this show uh, and shows of the past as well uh, that have been archived. So plenty of ways to uh, stay on top of CSI News and stay on top of the podcast. We're so thankful that you're here once again. So time now for our featured part of the podcast, and that's when we get to sit down and speak to a very distinguished guest. And uh, this week's guest, as I mentioned before, is just a tremendous one. Joining us is Dr. Wilma Jones, uh, Dr. Jones Professor uh, and reference. She's an instruction librarian. She's the former chief librarian at the college for 15 years, beginning in 2002 to uh, 2017. And she's also a uh, anti-racism advocate. Wilma houses a tremendous website that has so many great anti-racism resources. That website is library.csi.cuny. Dot edu backslash race matters and it's one of the uh, reasons why we're talking to uh, Wilma today. So first and foremost, thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Excellent, excellent. So you know, there's so much that you know I want to talk to you about, and I, I preface some of it before we got on the air. But you know, <laughs> I want to start from the very beginning because you've been at the College of Staten Island for some time now, and you know, I kind of wanted to talk about you know growing up CSI, so to speak. You know, your professional career, what got you to the College of Staten Island, and was was higher ed always the goal for you growing up? Oh gosh, yes. I I come from a. Uh family of educators. So um, I could say naturally, it was a natural thing for me to end up in higher ed. Mm. My, um, I'm originally from Sierra Leone in West Africa. My father is uh, retired now, but a veterinarian and a lecturer of agricultural economics. Mm. My mother was a um, elementary school physical education uh, teacher, but both sisters on each of my parents' side were all teachers, and there's a librarian in there. Mm. We grew up on a, a, a college campus, and uh, during holidays, I was always knee-deep in books, reading, and it was either that or I was helping my father, uh, assisting with delivering baby goats and cows <laughs> and you know, things like that. 
But um, fast forward to college days, I naturally found work in the library and worked there through my undergraduate and graduate years. I then got into library school for my second master's. And I knew um, right away that academic libraries would be a good fit for me, better than public libraries or special libraries like medical libraries and law libraries. So it took me nine years to get out of college, you know, doing my bachelor's and master's. Mm -hmm. So it was always already a career in higher education. Um, And then I got my first job here um, at CSI. Sure, sure. You know, I think that... um... I know you did your master's at, at NYU uh, post-grad, but you did your, your undergraduate work in, in Illinois, I believe. Is that where originally you're from and you, and you then moved to the uh, Northeast or were you, uh, did you have roots yes. in the Northeast your whole time? Um, so, yes, I, I actually came here at age 17 mm-hmm. from Sierra Leone, West Africa to study in uh, Illinois. And that is, um, my institution was Northern Illinois University. I did um, both masters there. And then while I was here at CSI, maybe uh, I think I started in 2000, I started my doctorate at NYU. I see. So it was a, a later decision to get into higher education administration. Yes. Terrific. Terrific. So you basically started your career at the College of Staten Island and you've been here ever since. So you have, you know, such a a great landscape to your professional uh, career. It's been rooted here and you've seen Mm -hmm. so many changes uh, at the College of Staten Island. You know, the 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 move, um, you know, from from Sunnyside. Right. Um, And then and and all that. And you've obviously witnessed the library grow the way the way it has. Can you talk a little bit about the vast amount of changes that that you've seen, you know, over the body of work that you've been here at the college? Yes, uh, I I can say a lot has happened since I've been here. You know, you you referenced the move. So, you know, structurally, we moved to Willowbrook in 93 Mm -hmm. uh, from two small institutions or colleges that merged to make CSI. And that was huge because the campus was 204 acres moved out of two small um, areas. We've expanded and have now gone back to St. George. You know, a good thing, the addition of a satellite facility. I love that, um, Mm -hmm. that we were able to do so. Another big structural change, I'd say, is the the residential hall. Ten years ago, we broke ground for that. And I believe we were the second in CUNY to open up our residential hall here. Yeah. Uh, demographically, I can say the the student body has has changed quite a bit, um, especially more so since the residential hall. But also, I'd add that you know I say diverse, not just in et- ethnicity, but we are drawing more students from out of state and internationally. Right. So that's a good tip, and that's a good thing. Academically, we have really expanded. Um, when I first came here, we had two divisions, um, human uh, humanities and social sciences and science and technology. Now we are two divisions plus three schools, the mm-hmm. business school, education and health sciences. Our programs have grown um, and expanded because then we had 16 departments. Now we are 25 departments. Mm-hmm. Most of these departments have grown out of new and progressive programs. Um, So, you know, for example, we have the mental health um, master's program out of psychology. Uh, Psychology was part of a three um, department of three programs, and now they're by themselves, right? Right. Um, PT, physical therapy, grew out of the biology department. Now it is on its own. It's a doctoral program and it's a program that is in demand. That's just, you know, amazing. We have lots of new and progressive uh, programs such as autism studies, Mm -hmm. East Asian studies, neuroscience, the um, world languages and literatures program now offers Arabic and Chinese. These are all in the last 10 years that have happened um so there's 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 a lot to see academically there's a lot we have here at csi that sometimes we all say still the hidden gem 
Yeah, I would I would certainly agree with that. You know, growing up around CSI myself, you know, working mm-hmm. primarily with the athletics program, you know, you had mentioned the residence halls, but seeing the mm-hmm. the eclectic and diverse community it has brought and just in recruiting alone being able to recruit students from from out of town and and you know, halfway around the world really yes, and having them yeah. be residents. And you know, you mentioned all of all of this e- expansion, but you know, some things you know, never change. And that is, you know, you always need a library on campus. But, yes. uh, I, you know, obviously, with all of these changes, the library needs to be consistent. And it also needs to serve all of these departments. And you served as chief librarian for 15 years uh, at the college. Yes. Can you talk about how dependent the college has been uh, on on the library and, and how the library has really changed over time too to accommodate the eclectic uh, and diverse student body? Yes, certainly, certainly. CSI, uh, the, the CSI library has also grown, has, has had to grow mm-hmm. with the changes in the programs. We also offer programs from the associates through doctoral programs. So we, the collections that we have uh, have to serve all these the diverse programs that we have. Of course, when I you know, first started, we were more print. Then we went right. to more electronic you know, more e-resources, e-journals, but now we have expanded to digital uh, resources, live streaming materials for ac- access to students from anywhere and everywhere. Right. Um, I can say the library was probably one of the few, let me boast a bit, departments that was ready to go for the lockdown because most of our mm-hmm. resources were digital and accessible, you know, from beyond the library. Uh, We've grown and expanded to include group study rooms, which we never had before. That's very much in in demand. We offer not just books. You know, people think of libraries as just books, but um, other things such as um, calculators we rent out, laptops we rent out, anything to help the students here focus on their programs, Mm -hmm. get them to succeed. We collaborate with various departments across campus for instruction, for programming. Um, we've done a lot in helping um, each other. You know, mm-hmm. in, in, no institution is an island. You have to collaborate. And I can also say that one of the good things about being at CSI, the CSI library, is that we are within CUNY. So. Mm-hmm. It, we are able to share resources yeah. with other CUNY. They are able to share with us. So uh, we benefit from being, you know, part of CUNY where we, our students are able to uh, access other resources from other CUNY. So that, that alone helps us give our community, a, co- a campus community, many of the resources that they need. And And that's kind of where technology really, you know, shows its face as well, being able to share that digitally and, and for a CUNY student to be able to access not just their own library, but those around them, you know, that's just, uh, that's, that's just amazing. And, you know, the, uh, the fact that you've been a part of that, you know, over mm-hmm. the years and have helped usher that in is really, you know, it, it's really commendable. And I know our students Thank speak you. very highly of, of the work that the library has done and really how it's changed according to their needs. And you mentioned, you know, COVID yes. as well and being there and being that, that force yes. that never really went away. I mean, some, you know, some things with COVID kind of shut down, but but the library didn't, you know, you guys had to be no. there uh, the entire yes. time and actually had a lot more weight put on you. So uh, that's oh. that's definitely something that um, that does not go unnoticed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. And, you know, part of part of the 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 uh, digital experience and, and the internet is what, what I wanted to focus on today. And, and, you know, mm-hmm. you personally, Wilma have been such a, um, uh, an advocate for, for anti-racism on our, on our campus. So, you know, I know, mm-hmm. uh, that's something that's, that's near and dear, uh, to you. And, and obviously in today's time, you know, in the wake mm-hmm. of George Floyd and a lot of the, mm-hmm. a lot of the headlines, um, there has been a need for anti-racism work, even though, 
you know, it's been in the undercurrent for a long time. It's kind yeah. of come up to the surface. And, and we shared this story, you know, my wife, who, who mm -hmm. is a, is a big anti-racism advocate. She had mentioned to me that, you know, the college of Staten Island has one of the greatest resources of anti-racism resources. And it was created by you and, and, <laughs> and, and that. So, um, you know, what I want to know is the mm -hmm. passion behind it is very personal for you. Can you talk about your mm. work with, with anti-racism, your call to advocacy and how that got started? Mm. Yes. I've always been interested and involved in, in human rights issues. I, I think I would I would bring anti-racism, um, the work I'm doing right now, under that umbrella. The origins, perhaps, I, I would say, was planted as a seed during my Girl Scouts training uh, in high school. <laughs> so I always, I, it always takes me back to then. But I, I would say the passion started then, probably. Mm -hmm. um, I can recall in the 80s, I was marching in protest against apartheid. I remember <laughs> um, how we, in our students in the 80s, we boycotted Coca-Cola because mm -hmm. they were in South Africa. And I believe they did pull out of South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, that was a coup for us. Um, in the 90s, I actually co-founded a nonprofit organization for refugees from Sierra Leone. Mm. Uh, there was a civil war there, and this nonprofit organization called Now We Own later expanded to all African refugees and those from the diaspora. We had a good run of 10 years, and we got recognized with certain awards here and there, New York City and, you know, internationally. But um, again, this is all the work I've been doing over time. Fast forward to present day, you could say that current work, um, with anti-racism is focusing on combating racism. Mm -hmm. And hence, this part of my interest into creating this website and building the website really came out of a feeling of helplessness, a feeling of hopelessness mm -hmm. during the lockdown of uh, the COVID pandemic. Um, I felt paralyzed, angry that I could not participate in in marches, um, I turned my anger and frustration, you, would, you could say, uh, to building this resource to curb curiosity, uh, to inform people, because at the time I would be getting questions like, what can I do? How can I help? Right. And I thought this would be a good resource to educate people, to incite positive action, to help eradicate uh, racism in, in all its manifestations. It, it, it gave me some focus in the days of days after uh, the murder of George Floyd, you know, because, again, I was I was paralyzed. I couldn't move. Mm. You know? But prior to publishing the, the website, I had my colleagues in the library. It was single, I single handedly pulled most of it together. But I needed my librarians to vet it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To make sure the resources that were there um, were okay and pertain to what I was trying to, to do. And once they gave me their blessing, I um, tested it out on family and friends. You know, they would give you frank and <laughs> honest mm -hmm. feedback um, before sending it out to the world. Um, so yes, um, yeah. Yeah, that's how it started. That's how this tool started. Yeah. And I, I would imagine when you're putting this together and anybody who who hasn't been on it, you know, hopefully is on it now, you know, mm -hmm. even even with us. And, you know, what what I want to know is how, you know, the the building building it um, as far as getting all the resources together were these were these things that you had you had pulled over many years time of, of these kind of information channels or did wanting to do this page kind of turn you on to what others were doing and and started to started to accumulate things that you thought would be beneficial the 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 latter the latter okay. was I want to get something done let's see what's out there mm -hmm. but in building the tool. Part of the training I've had as a librarian, as someone who's attended several professional development programs, um, I knew I had to put in things that could be beneficial for everyone in the sense that I created it like a buffet where, yes, it's filled with educational resources. Yes, it's filled with interactive materials, um, but I wanted it to be 
things that um, everybody would be comfortable um, finding something for themselves. So, for example, there is there there isn't just textual materials, you know, news from reputable newspapers, peer-reviewed articles, books. That's my kind of world. But mm -hmm. I also wanted to put in um, visual materials, charts and videos and films. Um, I also wanted to put in audio materials, podcasts and TED Talks, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I went to a, a professional development training once where the the program started with music. And I was thinking, wow, mm. you know, I've never forgotten that. The music was so pertinent to what we were about to do that that has always helped me in doing presentations mm. later. I can say in doing this presentation, the music that comes to mind is Man in the Mirror, you know, mm. from Michael Jackson, yeah. you know, the, the words that say I'm starting with the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm asking him or her to change his or her ways, you know. Mm. Um, if you want to make a change, if you want a better place, take a look at yourself and then make that change. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, uh, this is what I try to do to pull the resources together, um, make sure everyone could find something for themselves here. In yeah. the no, I, I think that that's great, uh, you know, because, <clears throat> because this work reaches different people in different ways, right? They come yeah. in. Uh, they come in at, at a different point in time, or with or with different yes. viewpoints, and and they need those different entryways. And so it's so interesting you bring up the music because I remember taking a a master's class at CSI in liberal studies. My professor was Peter Kyle, and mm -hmm. he would he would start lectures with a certain piece of music just to get us go. in a mindset uh, of what we were going to be doing or yes. some of the some of the topics that we would be reading. And and I remembered how powerful that was because. You know, we, by the time we took the class, it was 6.30 at night, right? We'd all have our, our different views of the day to that point, and we'd all be coming in yeah. in, in, yeah. in a different place. And yeah. the music really put us all on the same starting point. So it's so interesting that you mentioned that because there's so many, yeah. you know, it's so relevant, you know, especially with, yeah. a, with a topic like this one. Um, Definitely. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think what's great about these resources, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Wilma, is that it it gives you so much information but it also yeah. it also guides movement you know it also lets us know what we can physically be doing day to day to mm -hmm. to really advocate to uh, to be an advocate um mm -hmm. or or to be knowledgeable can i ask you you know the 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 purpose of this is obviously to to move people forward and yeah. can you talk a little bit about the uh, the difference between understanding what anti racism is and physically being a part of the movement, how one can immerse themselves to the point where they're now doing the work. Okay. So I guess, yes. if, yeah. So, I, you know, I guess if you can, if you can comment on, you know, this work that you're doing, isn't just about mm -hmm. informing people what anti-racism is, or even what, what racism is and what it looks like, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. trying to spring people into action. Can you kind of, can you kind of uh, comment on that? Yeah. So um, since the death of George Floyd, I think a lot of people have taken a look at themselves and looked at what have they done or are they doing um, with regards to being racist and or not being racist. I believe that if one were to take a look at this website and pick out one of the resources to look at. Like I said, any one of these, just reading one or two things here, listening to one or two things here, it would help you better understand where you are on the spectrum of, are you a person who um, understands what racism is? Hmm. So no one's perfect. We all probably have made mistakes in our lives and, you know, don't know it. But I think this is a time for people to take a look at themselves and um, find out whether they can work towards making 
the world a better place because we see it in the news every day. Um, there was a time when I, and I'm a news person, I stopped listening to the news mm. because my eight-year-old who's now 10 years old was only hearing difficult news, bad mm. news. Sure, yeah. <laughs> um, there was no good news. So I hope that um, something on this website would move someone, would help some someone understand how to talk to somebody else, right. how to help somebody understand what implicit bias is, how to help someone understand what microaggression is, or how to respond to someone. So really, this website, I would hope, would empower or enlighten um, anyone, be you a faculty, a, a staff member, a student, there's something here for everyone. In in the um, tab on the essays, peer-reviewed articles, there is uh, the first one, which I which is right there. It's a syllabus for students when dealing with the law mm. uh, or law enforcement. Um, it talks about the fourth, fifth, and sixth amendments that every student should know about. And I would hope that all students here read it and understand it because they need to know their rights when they are stopped by um, law enforcement. So again, it's all about educating. It's all about informing. It's all about being informed of what is racism or what is anti-racism. Yeah. Yeah, tremendous. And, uh, you know, obviously it's it's such a great resource and for anti-racism advocacy and just awareness, we have to think about what happens in, in our own household, our own home, our own, yes. com- our own community, our own region, our own nation. And, you know, it starts small. And, you know, here, the one thing that we all have in common is that we all work at the College of Staten Island. And I know that the college mm-hmm. has, has really tried to, to improve, you know, it's, it's diversity, it's, um, it's anti-racism awareness. There have been seminars, there have been programs. There's this, there's this resource uh, that, that you've created. And it's all in an attempt to, tr- to try and move us ahead with the anti-racism mm-hmm. work. It's not, it's not a switch that we can turn on, right? It's, it's, it's never that easy. And, no. so, and so sometimes progress is really hard to see. But, but how do we know when we see it, Wilma? When, when do we mm. know that 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 change is 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 happening that improvements are being made is is there a way that that we see that tangibly day to day um that is a difficult question to answer (laughs) um i cannot speak for the institution Mm -hmm. you know you know but personally i can say i'm hopeful having seen how several of my colleagues here at csi Mm. have responded to the violence and hatred against Blacks, Asians, or the minorities. Um, They've revamped their syllabus. Um, They've decolonized their syllabus. They've integrated this website into um, their classroom and discussions in their classes. Mm. Um, Many have told me about professional development trainings they've gone to. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that as many of our faculty and staff do this we will begin to see a change um individual acts of kindness mindfulness introspection conscious commitment to diversity equity and inclusion i think will help us all move the needle forward um i'm hopeful that Various groups on campus are doing work on anti-racism, as, yeah. as you just said. I'm a member of the PSE Anti-Racism Collective, and I'm so proud of the work we're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, perhaps one thing CSI can do as an institution is to, and yes, there are programs, you know, going on, but, you know, not everyone is able to afford to, you know, attend professional development. So mm. maybe CSI could make more and bring more to campus um, sensitivity trainings, um, you know, professional development trainings for all. Um, And and I think the more we do that, the more we have more of these programs, we might be able to um, see less issues Mm -hmm. because our students are experiencing um, racism on campus, discrimination on campus, 
um, you know, it's happening. But yes, I think the more we do it, we might be able to eradicate it, you know, eliminate it off of our campus. So we're all working towards Sure, this. sure. No, I can I can attest to that. I know that um, at the very least, it's now part of the conversation, um, mm -hmm. you know, not not just here, but but in most in most arenas, you know, I know, you know, I, I guess it was a year or a year and a half ago where we had uh, really the first time ever in, in the athletics program, we had, mm -hmm. um, you know, anti-racism training. And, you yeah. know, for for a lot of folks, you know, myself included, it could be could be a little awkward. It could be a little yeah. shy because you're yeah. not you're not used to dealing with your coworkers in that way or or talking about, you know, really heavy things that that we're talking about how people feel uh you know in their in their color or in their in their gender and and, and things like that and you know but just having that conversation just being able to, to 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 you know dip that toe in the water was was so good for our department it it it, yes. it opened us up to so much more conversation and just like just being able to to not be awkward about it in the future i think that goes a long way so you know i could exactly. definitely see i could definitely see you know progress made j just in those conversations and just not being taken aback by those kind of conversations anymore they've become exactly they become more conversational for for lack of a yes. better word um yes. you know as far as the um as far as the website itself and all the anti-racism mm -hmm. resources that that you have um you know like we like we both mentioned it's not a it's not a switch we can turn on and off so what yeah. what can we be doing wilma day to day what are some of the small takeaways we can keep in our subconscious mind or or go into work with or go into you know a, a new experience with to 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 really advocate for for anti-racism work and for and for um, you know, some of the things that are, that are on this website, what are some small takeaways we can, we can take away from this? I'm so happy you asked that yeah. question. Yeah. Um, this is something that as I was creating the website, it came to me to also include, um, certain things one could do. Uh, and there's a tab on the website called, what can I do? This actually came from people asking me, um, this question. And um, so I, I called together a few things uh, and it has developed as, as, as time has gone on. And if you go to the website, it's, it's a second tab and it says, what can I do? And a couple of things, I'll just go through a few of them. Sure. One is to be present, um, participate or support at least one organization that stands for social change. Um, another thing one could do is attend a professional development program about the importance of equity, diversity, inclusion, racial and social justice. There are lots of them available right now. Mm -hmm. Another thing one could do is to inform or educate yourself by reading at least one or two, one or uh, more of the essays or books documented here in this web guide. There's lots that you could go through and you could find. Another thing one could do is as a faculty member, review your syllabus and include an activity or reading that supports or raises questions about equity, diversity, inclusion, racial and social justice issues, if possible. You might just find one or two of these resources here on this web guide. Mm -hmm. Use your right as a citizen of the United States and vote in local and national elections. Yes, the national ones are important and we all try to to go and vote, but the local ones are just as important too. A few more I can just go through sure. really quick. Um, hold your supervisors accountable, please. Encourage them to include sensitivity trainings at least once a year. Um, again, uh, lots of um, in-service trainings that one could do or get one from elsewhere. And lastly, um, I just say there are lots of nonprofit organizations and small businesses that uh, one could support, many that are owned by Black and Indigenous people and people of color. I have a list of these organizations online. Again, it's on the web, in, on the web page that's called What Can I Do? And there's just lots of um, uh, information there for you to uh, look through. 
I hope I've answered that question. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. And I really love the examples because they dovetail so nicely with what we were talking about before, which was how we can mm-hmm. go from from talking about anti-racism and being comfortable and aware of what it means to correct. now putting yes. it into practice and actually doing the, the physical work, correct? Yes, 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 exactly. Exactly that. Excellent. Thank you. All of these links that you that you that you pose are great, mm-hmm. and they also lead to so many more uh, things yes. as well. So it's so it's it, it's great to kind of you know look at some of the things that that folks are doing and and look at some of the numbers. And you know you had mentioned the selected books. You know, mm-hmm. um, stamped from the beginning is one where you know my wife was reading it and would read certain excerpts to me out loud. She was so oh, wow. struck by the book, you know, and and just yes. some of the history that that truly has been all. Uh, right. from what we've read in our textbooks. It's, it's truly amazing uh, what that right. has brought out. But, but yeah, tremendous resources, no matter what, um, yeah, no matter what, what um, media you kind of ingest, whether it's, uh, you know, film and video, audio, like podcasts such as this one, and, and of course, mm-hmm. books, there's something there for everyone. So, so thank you again, you know, for putting it together. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you had mentioned before, Wilma, about about the news and about, you know, your, your eight year old now, now 10 years old and, and how tough it is. And it's so easy to get caught up in the, the, the damage that that is caused out there or the negativity that's still out there. And that's, that's all you really hear about. But, you know, what about what about the good? You know, can can we celebrate some of the good? And we mentioned that a little bit with what some of these companies are doing. Are there things yeah. that we should be proud of uh, at CSI that maybe the needle is moving a little bit forward? Can we can we talk about, you know, uh, some of the some of the good things that are that are happening that maybe the news yeah. fails to mention every day? Yes. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. I mean, if you're talking to the walking poster child of CSI, <laughs> um, there's so much good happening at CSI that we should be talking about. Um, you know, we have there's just so much we uh, lots of lots, lots to be proud of. Mm-hmm. Um, we have all inspiring professors here. Um, progressive programs I've talked about many, you know, a few state of the arts facilities that we have that are accessible for anyone here. There is just so much here. Uh, our nursing and social work programs are one of the best graduate schools in, in that was mentioned in the U.S. news mm-hmm. and uh, report. Our music program, I, I believe, was recently recognized as one of the best in New York City. Right. You know, so you know, I would love to see us put CSI on the map for our students and members of the Staten Island community by promoting um, this on our our, our website. Um, I'd like to see the landing page of our website show people and people in action. You know, actually, mm-hmm. just like I saw on the CSI Today um, uh, web. Web, web page um it'll be wonderful to be promoting this to our college um the staten island community mm-hmm. yes is the only public institution in the borough we have a captive audience here right, right. we need right. to do better to turn csi from the hidden gem to this shining star that yeah. we are I'd, I'd love to see tweets go viral about csi's program um the programs that we have headlining the advance every day mm-hmm. you know, or weekly, if, if, if not. But yes, we have a lot at CSI that's going on. You know, we need to do more to promote all the good things that we have here. I, 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 I I'm, I'm just talking off the top of my head mm-hmm. here. I, 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 there's just so much there is just so much yeah absolutely and i think uh you know i think your your website is one of those victories as well wilma i know uh you you know again some some might see it as a as a hidden gem for those of us who do uh interact with it it is it Mm -hmm. is one of the foremost resources that that's out there it truly is it truly is very powerful and uh there's there's so much uh you know there's so much information i hope that the csi community really embraces it and i think you know it it it, it shouldn't be just you know a time of the day or a certain month of the year i mean this mm-hmm. this is a website that really needs to be uh ingested and people need to be on it every day and yeah and, and, uh, and, and- yeah, and I think I, I I'm glad you said that. I, I will say I think people are on it. 
just about every day. Great. I am really, um, it's heartwarming to see the reception it got when we, we put it out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's out there. We get hits from not just, um, you know, you know, when I look at the uh, web analytics, mm -hmm. we're getting from um, um, international uh, wow. hits. You know, they're Googling and they're finding it. Right. So, you know, and, and that puts pressure on me to keep it current <laughs> and keep it updated. Right. Right. Um, but I'm glad it's out there. And I, I hope that more people will use it in the community, in, in on campus. I hope more people will turn to it. Um, but I would also say I hope people understand that it is a living document. Mm -hmm. It is a document, a work in progress. Um, I welcome anyone who has an article or something that they would like to add to it. Just know that we have to vet it to make sure it ties into, you know, what we're doing. Um, and, you know, it's not just going to be standing out there. Um, we want both uh, educative, educational and positive and, you know, articles with solutions, mm -hmm. um, you know, that would help people understand what we're talking about here. So I welcome uh, resources to add to the website. Great. Great. So uh, we're just about, you know, out of time, Wilma, um, you know, for our interview, but I did want to save, you know, at least the last question for, you know, I think you mentioned all the great things that are that are happening at the College of Staten Island. And, you know, specifically now with with, you know, school starting to open up again, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we are still in the middle of a, of, of a pandemic, but definitely more students on campus. Now you're seeing a lot more traffic in the library. I'm oh, sure. Yes. Um, can you talk about some of the things that, that you're maybe excited about programmatically at the library or, or just, you know, in general with um, student activities, can you talk about some of the things that you're excited about personally here uh, for this spring semester? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, First of all, let me just say it's a delight to return to providing in-person services. Mm -hmm. um, we've been away for so long. Uh, the library has almost been at capacity daily since the beginning mm -hmm. of, the, of spring. Um, I'm on the second floor of the library and just about every seat is taken in that area. Uh, it's nice to see students on campus. It's nice to see even my colleagues right. in the library and outside of the library. Sadly, not all of our services are available right now due to short staff, but in two weeks, as of the 1st of March, we'll be able to uh, operate, you know, fully all the other critical services, you know, textbook circulation, group study rooms, students been asking for that, and keeping the facility open past 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, on weekends. But I'm really excited that, you know, moving forward, we've seen... It's almost like we all had to really take a look at ourselves during COVID right. um, to see what kinds of services and resources we provide um, to the community. Um, we've seen, you know, a, a diminishing sort of value in the physical format because of um, inaccessibility during COVID. But, um, you know, going forward, we're going to look at ways to make those physical formats um, accessible. So I'm talking about things like books and textbooks, you know, mm -hmm. during COVID, the lockdown, our students couldn't get access to textbooks in the library on reserve. So we need to find ways to either digitize them or just find other ways to get them to our students. Yeah. OER, open educational resources, uh, materials are all the rage now. This, this is something libraries had taken a lead on, particularly CUNY libraries. We have been helping faculty develop open access textbooks, you know, to um, ensure that, not ensure, but to make available textbook for free to students mm -hmm. in the sense that, you know, you create your own textbook so that students can use and over the past three years, we have this on our website. Um, just at CSI, we have been able to save students close to $1.4 million wow. in textbooks. This is because about 16 departments at CSI have taken that leap to create textbooks for their courses. We hope that this will continue so that there will be more savings for students in the future. 
Another thing, a couple of more mm -hmm. things that come to mind, programming, I think for everyone, <laughs> I believe will continue on Zoom or mm -hmm. HyFlex as we have all seen a dramatic increase in audience participation. And so, you know, most of the programs we offer in the library, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, live instruction and or workshops or, you know, programming in the archives, we will definitely continue to do more of that on Zoom or HyFlex. Um, but lastly, I'd say instructional spaces and social spaces for individual and or collaborative study are being re-examined for current and future use. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the social distancing, you know, spacing out of tables, study tables and areas for students to work. This is something we're looking at, you know, for, for the future. We've already, you know, done that now, but going forward, we don't know whether we're going to have more of this or not, but the new normal, mm -hmm. <laughs> as they're putting it, is definitely going to be different. So yes, there's just lots we are excited about at uh, the CSI Library, and um, we're just we're just glad to be back. Really, yeah, we're all glad to be back, seeing each other and seeing students in the library. Yeah, for sure, I can definitely attest to that. Uh, seeing that, seeing the traffic on campus, um, you know, foot traffic on campus is is very welcomed and i know uh you know the library is, is always been one of those buildings that you know is always going to have traffic no matter what but seeing them back in there is is kind of yes. heartwarming and s similar to what you were saying it's like you know covid did come with some some really you know heavy heavy things that we had to uh, adopt but some of it's here yes. to stay things like high flex and and zoom yes. capabilities it was you know, I don't. You know, I don't want to say it was a it, it, it was a good thing. You know, COVID. Mm -hmm. But if there were some good byproducts that came out of it, is knowing that we can work remotely and that things can That's be right. done. You know, from the comfort of your own home sometimes, and it's opened us all, instructors yes. and and students alike, to really be open to that modality. And and that's here to stay. I don't think it's ever going away. Um, that's you know, for sure. that's yeah, for taking sure. advantage of that. So, you know, your job, Wilma, always changes, right? It's uh, 30 that's years and, and counting, and it's it's always going to have a new element, a new wrinkle to it. So, um, And I'm excited about that. Exactly, yes. exactly. And, uh, and we're thankful for you, Wilma, and your staff, um, you know, continuing to serve students day to day. And, of course, all of your work that you've done with the uh, anti-racism website as well. I uh, really want to thank you for being a guest uh, this week. I hope that, you know, we can we could do something like this again sometime. And I really mm -hmm. want to thank you for for giving us so much insight and, and so much, um, you know, so much thought into it. Thank you so much again. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Wilma. Back. Thank you. Okay, right. so that was uh, Dr. Wilma Jones. Uh, we look forward to catching up again with Wilma down the road. But, of course, again, the website, library.csi.cuny.edu backslash race matters. Well, once again, that was Dr. Wilma Jones, the uh, CSI professor and reference instruction librarian, uh, former chief librarian at the college, but of course, uh, social justice warrior, anti-racism advocate. Um, that website truly one that every single person who is listening to this podcast has to visit. It is a, an authority on anti-racism work and so many resources that are out there for people uh, to really accumulate and ingest and, and really make a part of their of their day to day. This was a true joy to have Wilma on. Uh, we've known each other for many, many years, and uh, she does just a spectacular job both in the library and uh, in the classroom and, of course, uh, to educate us all each and every day. I want to thank her once again for being a guest and remind you to join us next week where CSI co-host of CSI Today Talks, Terry Mayers, will be joined by not one, but two guests next week. He is going to speak with Laura Moreo and Greg Brown, who are both overseeing WSIA. And they're going to be talking all about WSIA 88.9 FM, Staten Island's only FM radio station, talking a little bit about what they're up to there, what they've done during COVID, and some of the plans that students can, can and should be taking advantage of uh, over in 1C at WSIA. So that's next week, Terry being joined by Laura Moreo and Greg Brown. For this week's episode, I'm your co-host, David Pizzuto. Once again, want to thank Wilma Jones for joining us and thank you all for listening to CSI Today Talks right here on csitoday.com and from wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. See you soon. 
Thank you for listening to this edition of the CSI Today Talks podcast. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast to get alerted for brand new episodes and to listen on demand to your favorites. Be sure to check us out at www.csitoday.com or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast.